<laughs> Welcome back to the channel guys. As you can see, we're out here in Kingsland, Georgia doing a meet. Just a little meet for everybody that meet up with their cars. And as you can see, it's oh the sun's blocking the light. No, it's not gonna work. But we got uh cars left and right, Subarus, our skylines. What up? We got a bike. We got one of the dudes from the homies crew, Ken's crew. What we got down there? I don't know. Oh, we got, there goes the white one. There goes a white Mustang. No, don't leave. Bring that smart car over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got the camera. <laughs> smart car. Oh, oh, go. she got three piece wheels, too. <laughs> oh, work on some guys' portions of the If you guys know me, you know I love Subarus. It brings me back to the days, especially when I was, uh, big fan of the hatchback. I mean, I'll always be a fan of the hatchback. It'll always be my favorite car. But, uh, we got the skyline now. So. More cars. At least he's not being a Corvette owner and not parking away from everybody. He might try to hit us. Good, how about you? Today it is. <laughs> going to be working on my car today which is kind of a rare thing I've been having a little bit of an issue with um, my tag jumping everywhere so I'm gonna see if I can pull it out and pull the back board off of it and get it a little bit resoldered um, for you guys that haven't really seen my car it's a 92 GTST um, it does have an RB 25 Neo in it nothing too special fairly stock but um once I get this out I'll, um, well, let me get it unlocked for you guys. So I can kind of tell you what's going on. Oh, it's the perks of having a 90s car. It doesn't really like to, um, unlock sometimes. So what I'm having is this guy is just kind of wanting to glitch out everywhere. So I could be going, you know... We'll say 60 kilometers an hour and this thing's jumping from 2,000 to 6,000 while I'm just cruising and it's it's kind of annoying so even if I get on my car like it'll sink all the way to 10 but we really know that it's like 4,500 and that being said like I don't like that it just doesn't feel safe to me so I'm going to pull this out. Um, if you guys ever want a video down the line of the process of taking it out, it's really not too complicated, but it is nice to have, you know, a tutorial on how to do this. Um, once I get the board out, I'll probably put a little bit more into how to get it out, and I'll see you guys back. 
All right, guys, so we're back. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. On these older Skylines, there's it's a shit ton of bolts. Well, mostly little screws, as you can see here, just to get this out. It's fairly simple to get them out. Um, you just got to kind of locate them. It's like a puzzle. So realistically, all we got to do now is just go ahead and pull this guy here, this one here, this one here. And you got one more over here, and we're going to slide this out. Um, sometimes you have to be careful. The uh, speedo cable in the back of this that actually drives your kilometers an hour is a little bit fragile. Um, I've seen a couple break. I've had one break on me personally. So um, after we get that out, I'm going to try to kind of separate this, get the board out of the back of it. And um, I'll, I'm going to look for like weak solder spots, things like that. And I'll kind of show you guys what's going on. But we'll catch you back. All right, there's a there's one thing I kind of want to show people, and I see a lot of questions about it on the forum is when their actual speedometer quits working. It's gonna be this guy right here. Typically, this little plastic piece, as you can see, mine's kind of flimsy. This speedo cable actually runs from the transmission all the way up to the back of here, and this tends to break off. So that's gonna have to be replaced one day. I mean, eventually, I mean, mine's fine right now. It's a little jumpy and crappy, but yeah, this is what causes that shit to go out, and it's not fucking cool, and trying to get a new one in is kind of a bitch because the angles suck. You gotta run it through the firewall, but yeah, I just figured I would throw that in while I was doing this. Alright guys, so this was actually a lot easier to take apart than I thought it would be. You just kind of push on these clips and pull it apart and it just slides apart. Um, so next what I'm going to try to do is actually take this cluster face out. And hopefully there should be a little board behind it. If not, then I'm actually kind of clueless on this. I'm, I'm kind of taking a guess on this on my own. I couldn't really find much on forums. Um... But typically there's a little panel board back here that runs, six, sends a signal from the ECU. Um, so I'm just going to undo all these little screws, take this face plate out, and we'll see what's behind the board. And if I find anything out, if I see some weak solder points, I'll show you guys and I'll lay some new solder on it and get back to you. Alright guys, I'm back. I um, got my uh, gauge cluster, I got it soldered back in. And... I'm sorry I didn't get any of it on video, um, I was kind of, you know, just digging around with it and didn't really think to pick up the camera, but we're going to go ahead and see, so this was kind of just jumping around everywhere, I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, sorry that the cover's not back on it, this is just kind of a test and see what it does. So, so far that looks pretty good to me, um, it's not jumping anymore which is good. Everything else on here is still working fine. Um, so I'd call it a success. So if you uh, ever want a tutorial in the future, I uh, don't mind doing it. I will take it apart again and kind of show you all the solder points on it. I couldn't really find anything online about it. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it was a fucking pain in the ass to hit all those soldering points, but um, you know, just comment down below if you would like to see it done. I don't mind doing it. Now that the oil pressure's kind of dropped down, you can see that it's sitting a little lower. But, um, you know, thanks for checking it out. Um, I'm going to try to be doing a little bit more with my car. Um, I have done a lot. I just haven't been able to get it on video. But stay tuned. Alright, guys. Now that Jared's done doing his thing. We're gonna go ahead and change the oil on the Skyline. It's been way too long. So we're at least gonna drain the oil. We're gonna go see if we can find that little three prong thing uh, and try to remove the oil filter. For some reason, the oil filter got hulked on or something. So we're gonna see if we can at least, at least we're gonna at least drain the oil. But we're gonna try and hopefully cross our fingers, get that oil filter off because that's, it's time for that to go. So, we'll see you in the next clip.
way overdue guys so thankfully we got it ready to go so at least changing the oil because that's terrible that's poor management on the car focus all right guys that's after much 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 problem with getting that piece of shit off we finally got it off it's been practically since yeah since I own this car I've only done one oil change and I had to leave the filter on because I had no way to get it off but now we have got it off that <clears throat> that thing is gone and we're good now so now we can officially let the rest of it drain so now that's off I gotta go press these two balls that are in there uh, to release more flu uh, engine oil and then we're going to relax and put everything back together start up the car hopefully it starts up great if not better because I don't know how long that thing has been on there for I think I, I'm pretty sure the previous owner didn't do his part either so that thing has been on there since at least I've owned it, which means it's been on there almost a year. All right, guys, everything is on and tightened up. Oil filter this time is hand tightened. Make sure I tighten the bolt down there, five quarts of oil. So here we go to the startup. Let's cross my fingers and hope I did it right. There's no leaks. I'm gonna let this run for a bit, let it prime itself, then we're gonna go take it out for a quick drive around the corner. Come back, check the leaks one more time. Cross our fingers, hopefully everything is done right this time, unlike whoever did it last time. So good on me, and we'll see you guys in the next clip. Alright guys, so we finally got it done. It's actually running great. Now we're on to the next problem. And it goes right back to the uh, rear suspension. So let's go ahead and take a walk over there and uh, see what we're, we got going on. All right, so if you guys can kind of tell, maybe, it's hard to tell. Um, this tie rod in is, has no more bushing. So it's pretty much just a giant circle uh, with the ball joint sitting in between just wobbling up and down and stuff so now we have another issue to attack like Jared said previously in one of the previous clips these are 26 year old cars 20 year old cars depending on which model year you get you know um, so these things fall apart and also the part hard parts are hard to find so hopefully we got a 240 part and hopefully that will work just as well even though it's not a 240 it looks very similar thread pitch is still the same 
So we're going to test that out in the next video for you guys. And also we got uh, a really nice surprise just in case this thing decides it wants to keep going down. And I want to keep taking Rose's car to work and uh, leaving her with nothing. So always like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for the next video because this one's actually going to be pretty cool.